And I uh, want to say good day to Matt Knibber, Leanne Henderson, Margot Henny, uh, Henny and Peter Brown, uh, and uh, Wendy Cully and Jane Taylor and uh, Deanna Matrocki and Heather Watkins. Uh, and Kate, all, who are all watching, and it's good to have you with us. Uh, our sermon series at the moment is seeing God in the ordinary. And I was wrestling, my intent in diving into this series was to have a lighter, simpler uh, kind of sermon series through the January period. That uh, as I was praying, preparing for last week, I ended up talking about seeing God in family and, and for most of us we know that's complicated but as I was praying preparing for today I, I actually felt like I was right to talk about seeing God in the angst we see on our social media feeds and on the six o'clock news would you agree that there is a little bit of angst in your social media feed from time to time or on the six o'clock news do you, would you agree with that? What are, what are some of the things people get angsty about or, or worried about? What are the, some of the things people are, are concerned about or, or can even get antagonistic about? If you think over the last couple of years in the Australian life and, and uh, what's been on our social media feeds, uh, what are the things that people uh, have strong opinions about? It's the, uh, for a lot of a lot of people. It, it boils down to rights and freedoms. It's interesting. We're going to talk more about that. So, how does that? What what issues has that sort of coalesced around? What's what's some of the the issues that have f got people focused at the moment? Vaccination. People got. You think a few people have got some opinions about vaccination? Do you think? Any other issues that have uh, sort of focused people's attention over the last couple of years? I was trying. To, I when I was stopping to think about, it, I, was, I was trying to put a list together, and I uh, I came up with. I'd say I, th I think probably climate change has been one of them. Would you say? Uh, Australia Day has been one of them. Uh, marriage equality was a big one for a, uh, for a big period of time for in our country. Uh, obviously, we talked about vaccination, and lockdowns, uh, the whole Black Lives Matter thing the me too movement uh and not so much in our country but in other countries uh have you noticed people get a bit angsty about gun control and guns and things it's uh, hard for us aussies to understand particularly for the place where port arthur happened um so as i was thinking okay god where are you in all that i i i, I wanted to I wanted to talk about something light and simple, but I, I figured it was right to talk about this stuff because this is, this is, all of us have to make sense of that. We all bump into people with strong opinions about things one way or the other, don't we? And so it's important to talk about how do, how do you make sense of that? As Vicky's already said, one of the things I've noticed in almost all these issues is the angst seems to focus around either people's freedoms and whether people feel free enough or equality and whether people feel equal enough and and that equality can be about uh, whether we are treating uh, uh, people in who are going to be in our future one of the things about climate change is that some of the choices we're making at the moment mean that future generations will be suffering at levels that we don't have to suffer. And so people are worried about that. Uh, other things are about facing stuff from our past. Now, I know it's safer not to talk about this kind of stuff, but I feel like as followers of Jesus, we need to talk about it, don't we? We need to talk about these issues that are causing people real concern. So where do we see God in all this? If you've got your sermon notes, you'll find, look, if you're watching from home, uh, you'll find the sermon notes, or even here at, in Mornington or at Lena Valley, in the Version Bible app. And you'll find the sermon notes uh, 
under under events, and if you if you you're in Hobart, it'll just pop up with Citywide there. Otherwise, you might have to search for Citywide Baptist Church. One of the things that uh, I, I think it's important for us to come back to and understand, particularly in a world where we tend, to, it's very easy to fall into an us and them kind of thing. Right up front, one of the things we need to understand, all people are created in the image of God. And Ecclesiastes says that God has put eternity in the hearts of man. That, but it goes on to say, and, but it's beyond our understanding in Ecclesiastes 3, 10 to 12, that there is part of you that knows there should be more, that, that this, there is more to it than this. And that's true for everybody. And so when we see people getting uptight about different issues, that is actually a mark of God's fingerprints on their life. There's something in them that kind of knows that things aren't quite right. In fact, Romans 8 tells us that the whole of creation is groaning because things aren't right. That for all of us, if we had to stop and... Because sometimes if, you, if you're on one side of a debate, it's really hard to understand people on the other side of the debate. Have you experienced that at all? But for all of us, we know that uh, the world is broken. And it's important to understand that, that all people kind of know in their gut that there, there is more to it. And in fact, Romans tells us that all of us have the law written on our hearts in Romans chapter 2. And so often what is happening when, when people are having debates about vaccines or Australia Day uh, or any of the other things that are, that, that people are going, there's something that's not right, no matter what side of the debate they're on. And that is actually a reflection of the, the part of them that it was, like all people, created in to to work the garden and take care of it we were put in initially very early first chapters of the bible we were given work to do to make a difference in the real world but how 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 does it go wrong so if if this is all if all this angst is actually coming from somewhere that is created by god how does it go wrong Well, Jesus comes and he says, you need to be motivated by a vision of the kingdom of God. In Matthew 6.33. And the problem is that God's kingdom is much bigger than you can fit in your head. God's kingdom is much bigger than you can fit in your head. And it's been something I've had to learn. I I spent a long time working in a mission organization where I felt like I was... um, bringing God's kingdom to earth and that was part of the motivation of what we're trying to do and it's, it's a good motivation but the danger is when you start to think that your bit is God's kingdom that starts to be a worry. I, I had to take a whole journey. God very early on in my life gave me the Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 where it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Where things often go wrong is where people are seeing an aspect of the truth but none of us can see the whole truth and as Vicky's already pointed out uh, that we can tend to usually what happens is we tend to either focus on freedom and, and a lot of people when it comes to vaccines and things is wanting to focus on freedom and their freedoms or we can focus on equality and we've got to make sure that everybody's treated fairly and equally. And both of those things are important to God. Both of those things matter. But there, be, there is a real danger when we get fixated on one side of a view or another. There's a, a, a guy who has been a bit of a mentor to me um, and he, he, he's a remarkable guy. He was a, an Anglican missionary 
who was in India for many, many years. And he came back to London and he looked around and said, wow, things have changed here. Do you know England is probably more of a mission field than India is at the moment? And he wrote these books saying, we have to rediscover that we are now missionaries in the Western world. His name is Leslie Newbigin. One of the things he said uh, is that that there is a real danger whenever Christians or anybody set aside and focus on one issue. He said, the project of bringing heaven down to earth always results in bringing hell up from below. The full revelation of the heavenly city lies beyond the horizon of earthly history. That one of the, it's, it's important for us to understand that the kingdom of God is here now. But when we think our actions are the center of what God is doing, there is a danger that what we are actually doing is bringing hell up from below, is what he's saying. Jesus tells a story about that. He says, look, I, wanna, I want you to understand what the kingdom of God is like. In Mark 4, he says, A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, and the seed, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest is has come. What Leslie Newbegin says is we, we've got to maintain a vision of the kingdom of God. That's got to be a motivating thing for us. But we've got to understand Jesus' words. He says, look, if you, God might let you plant some seeds, but it's God that does the work in his kingdom. And when you think God's kingdom hinges on a single issue, you're in danger of bringing hell to earth, is what he's saying. When, when you think God's kingdom is, hinges on a single issue, we're in dangerous territory. And that's where I think, as we look at our social media feeds, it's easy to get swept up. And it's easy, particularly, some of the issues really matter. Another, another obvious one is talking about abortion. Some of these, th- these, are, these are not superficial things. None of these issues, uh, issues are superficial. Don't hear me saying they don't matter. But when we think they are the only thing that matters... That's where we become. Where, that's where we end up in trouble, and that's where it is. It is the part of us created in God's image that is designed to care. But we need to understand that the kingdom of God is not just about freedom, or it's not just about equality. It was Leslie Newbigin said. From its first page to its last, the Bible is informed by a vision of human nature for which neither freedom nor equality is fundamental. What is fundamental is relatedness. What is fundamental is relatedness. At its heart, our faith is about relationship. When a teacher of the law came to Jesus and said, tell me, what's most important? What did Jesus tell him? Does anyone know what? What did Jesus tell him? Did he say freedom? Did he say everybody should be treated equally? No, he said this. He said, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. And in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus ups the ante and says, you've heard it say, love your neighbour. But I'm telling you, love your enemies. That's a bit challenging, isn't it? One of the real challenges for me at the moment is, um, and sadnesses for me, is that often we Christians can get sucked into these social media battles quicker than other people. Because we feel like we've got to fight for truth. 
And what we're actually saying in that is that uh, God needs us to fight for his truth. It's interesting, Jesus never called us to fight for truth. He called us to love. He is at the centre of, go- of the gospel. We're not. That uh, as we process, we will see real, p- behind social media posts are real people with real concerns. And the danger can be we can see them as the problem. The them you are seeing as the problem is the same person Jesus loved and gave himself up for. And again, don't hear me saying these things don't matter. Equality matters. The bi- equality is a theme in the Bible. Galatians 3, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you're all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The incredible good news of the Bible is we're all one in Christ. We are all equal before Jesus. And so equality matters. I love too that at the heart of the gospel, freedom matters. But not on its own. One of my favourite verses, Galatians 5, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and don't let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Galatians 5 goes on and says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But you've got to understand the the freedom that Paul is writing about in Galatians is often a little different to the freedom we see our freedom fighters fighting for on the steps of Capitol Hill or... in in their social media feeds. You see, what he goes on next to say is, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But listen to his words. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Or literally, in the Greek, he's saying, do not use your freedom to do whatever you want. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbour as yourself. So we see on our six o'clock news and we see on our social media feeds angst. We see people caring about issues that really matter and finding it hard to understand people who would disagree with them. And one of the dangers is whenever we get focused on an issue, one of my, the things my dad used to say, I find helpful, he said, uh, all ideologies are fascist. All ideologies are fascist. What he means by that is whenever you are fighting for an idea, you're no longer seeing people and you want to impose your will on them. And, and we're in dangerous territory when it's like that. So, where do we see God? We, we actually do see God in the angst. We see his heart, the people caring about the world being broken and, and seeing what they perceive is to be the answer. But as followers of Jesus, we also know that the answer will never come in the resolution of a problem. The answer only comes through Jesus. Let 
Leslie Newbigin said, Jesus is the one and only center that has been given for the unity of humankind and thus the one object that can bind nations into unity without setting them at enmity with one another. He's also saying, whenever Christ isn't Lord, another idol takes its place, takes his place. You see, God's purpose, Ephesians tells us, was to draw all things together under Jesus. That was God's purpose, to draw all things together under Jesus. He made, Ephesians 1, 9 to 10, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Jesus. That we as followers of Jesus are invited to look to him and as we look to him to discover we are called to love. We are called to love God and love our neighbours and we are called to stand up for justice and things that matter but under his authority and never mistaking the issues for him. When the issues become God, hell is released. An issue or an ideology will never bring life. I'm going to invite the band back up as we come. Like I said, my intent was for this summer series to be a bit lighter. Don't think that we quite got there with that that intent. Um, But I do want to challenge you. I want to challenge us. It can be it can be easy to distance ourselves from voices that we don't agree with. It can be easy to divide the world into a kind of an us and them kind of way, even the way we think. In fact, we actually the way social media works is it tries to discern who the people you like are and who the people you don't like are and to only give you the people you like in social media. It tries it tries to separate and and to create little boxes of relationship. As followers of Jesus, we are called to love people who we don't agree with. We are called to to not just see in the angst, you know, evil, although that's where it, it, it is there, but to see in the angst behind every person. There is a, a beautiful part of them who sees a broken world and is wanting to do make a difference. And, and to watch out, sometimes we'll fall into either fighting for freedom or fo- fighting for equality, but ultimately it's about Jesus. Let's say I just pray. Jesus, it is a strange old time. And there are c- all kinds of questions that, that do bring us into conflict at the moment. Can you help your people, can you help us be agents of your love and not agents of division? Can you help us be open to the life that is only available through you and to remember that our faith is about relationship and not about ideas? Help us be open to all you have for us, Jesus. We ask this in your name. Amen.